What's going on, everybody? We got there. It's Friday. It is April 20th. Wink, wink. And uh, we've got a monstrous baseball slate tonight. Uh, 15 games, I believe. I think we've got everybody, right? Yeah, 15 games tonight. Uh, t 16, if you want to hang out in the one game that plays at 1 o'clock. Um, <laughs> yesterday could have been better, but... Today's a better day, so let's not care about yesterday any longer. Uh, I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Jake Hari. Jake, what's going on? Not much. Uh, just just uh, licking my wounds from having no Arietta last night and <laughs> the Angels stack. Uh, but hockey made up for it, so it wasn't too bad of a night overall. Um, yeah, a lot of games tonight. I'm excited to get into some of these games some others are pretty awful, so we'll try to speed through those pretty quick and, and talk about the good stuff in some of these games. Yeah, some of this is going to be really boring, I have a feeling. Oh, yeah. Um, for the listeners, a little bonus coverage at the end of this. I'm going to pull up my NBA sheet and give like five minutes on my thoughts on the NBA slate tonight. We'll get Jake's thoughts as well. Um, and then I'll give hockey thoughts because uh, I won't know a single thing that I'm talking about. But seriously, I am going to uh, pull up my sheet and take a, a quick look at the NBA for people. That way, um, I know people have wanted uh, a, the solo NBA video still, but I don't have much to say. So uh, we'll use that as uh, the last couple minutes of this video. But for now, we're starting baseball. So let's get into this. First game up, Orioles and Indians. Um, Orioles with a 3.7 run implied total. Indians, 4 run implied total. It's a 53% chance to win for the Indians. Dylan Bundy going for Baltimore. Trevor Bauer uh, going for Cleveland. Um, I like Bauer a little bit here on FanDuel. I don't have a huge preference for either of them on DK. I don't really expect to have much of either uh, regardless of it all. But if I were going any direction, it would probably be a, a bit of Bauer. What about you? I think Bauer, yeah. If I had to choose one of these pitchers, I like both of them just as pitchers for the year. Um, the Orioles are first in O swing percentage and second in swing percentage this year. And the game logs look good for Bauer. Not that that's everything, but seven Ks in each of his first three starts. Um, the swing strike rate isn't quite where I want to see it. Uh, the whiffs are decent, but not great. Um, I don't know that I'm going to end up using Bauer for 9400 If he was a little bit cheaper, I'd probably consider him. But since we've got four legitimate aces going tonight, uh, I think it's just going to be tough for me to get to this price range for pitcher. I want to pay up for one and then go uh, dumpster diving probably for my second pitcher. Yeah, it, it's going to be hard to, to be in this sort of range because um, I would want to have one of those top – if I were on DK, I would want to have one of those top four guys and then the likelihood of me wanting to grab the fifth most expensive pitcher is pretty low. There are a bunch of guys that I see that are lower that would be um, guys that I would want to target. And for FanDuel, like if the Indians were bigger favorites, I would have a little bit more interest in Bauer, but there's some monstrous favorites out there that are – you know, arguably just as good of pitchers as Bauer, so I just don't really see the need to go that direction. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Um, it's just a price thing, and just all those aces. So like, like one of those aces is probably going to get you 35 or 40, and I don't think Bauer can really match that sort of upside or, or really come close to that in this matchup. I would have liked these guys to be playing yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, and Bundy, same thing. Like, he's another pitcher that I believe in. I like his price, but the matchup is pretty awful against the Indians. Yeah. All I these like the lefties. Indians bats tonight. You do? A little bit. So you, like, you like the lefties? A little bit. Yeah. Lindor I mean, I could a see, lot. Yeah, I could see going to Lindor and, and Jose Ramirez, and Brantley's been hitting really well. So those would be three guys that I would look at. Um. But I, I have a lot of respect for Bundy, what he's done this year and towards the end of last year. So I think he, I think he's a pretty good pitcher. 
and certainly don't want righties against him, but this Indians lineup is almost all lefties. Yeah, um, I'd be looking at Lindor, Kipnis, Ramirez, Brantley. I'm fine with that first four. They're not going to be like my favorite stack of the day, uh, but I think it's a, you know, they're all pretty decent players in and of their own right. So particularly Lindor, Ramirez, and Brantley. So it's definitely guys that I would want to have at least some exposure to. Uh, yeah. Nothing that I'm doing backflips over. Uh, the total isn't really that great. Only four runs. There are some in the high fours and even a couple in the fives tonight. So it'll be hard to get to a ton of Indians, but they match up relatively well. Uh, and then on the Orioles, I don't know. I've loved Pedro Alvarez for 10 years, 15 years. I don't know. Since college, I guess. Uh, I'd like to use him, but I don't see any real reason to do so. I don't like if you want to hunt for a homer for Alvarez and Chris Davis, I guess, you know, Bauer does struggle with the long ball from time to time. You know, those are two guys that have power against righties, but I think you're being uh, a little too contrarian to go for the team with the 3.7 run implied total. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping, like, I think both of these pitchers probably pitch okay. Yeah. Um, Bundy's probably got a better chance to get blown up here just because of all these lefties. Um, but I just don't see the huge upside uh, on either side. So I would I'm just hoping minimum, this game. Minimum exposure across the board for this game. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just hoping it stays pretty quiet. Likewise. Yeah, because I know that I won't have that much of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we're good to move on. Yeah, let's do it. All righty. Yankees and Blue Jays. Uh, Yankees with a five-run implied total. Blue Jays, 3.7. It's a 64% chance to win for the Yankees. Sonny Gray on the hill for New York. Marco Estrada going for Toronto. Um, I like Gray uh, a decent amount here. Uh, he obviously grades out really well on FanDuel with that high chance to win. Um I'm not terribly nervous about the Blue Jays bats. And then if I was looking at DK, again, I would probably go to someone lower than Gray, but I like Gray more than I liked Bauer or Bundy. Yeah, I like Gray too. This is another guy that I, I really want to be a thing. Um, <laughs> like I thought he was going to have a, a big year, and I hate when Gary Sanchez catches him. He just seems like Gary Sanchez is just not a good defensive catcher, and it's not really a secret. Um, so I don't really like targeting Yankees pitchers when he's catching that much, unless it's Tanaka. But even then, like, I, I don't love it. Um, I'm not super excited about using Gray here, even though it is a, a pretty low total for Toronto. Um, I don't know. I mean... The Blue Jays are fourth in swinging strike rate. Ooh. It's too low of a price for Gray, I think. Like, I, I think he's underpriced, but I think he's going to be pretty chalky. Like, I don't know. I, I want to go even lower. Like, I, I'm i considering Estrada even on the other side, unfortunately. Really? Yeah. Okay, he's just, keep going. Yeah, he's top 30 in whisper swing this season for starters. Um, and, like, the Yankees, ton of power. The weather is okay. It's going to be like 50 degrees. There's some wind blowing out, which is a little scary. Um, but Estrada has been missing bats really well, especially the last couple starts. He went seven innings against the Yankees in his first start. And Stanton looks pretty lost right now. We know Judge can strike out. Sanchez can strike out with the best of them. Tyler Austin can strike out a ton against righties. Um, I don't know. I think he could survive here. And he's really cheap. So... For an MME play, he'd be someone that I'd definitely have some exposure to. I don't know if I could get to him in, in one lineup for me because there's a guy that I like that's even uh, lower than him on DK. Yeah. Uh, not with you on the Estrada play. <laughs> um, that's I understandable. He's probably going to get blown up based on this line. Um, although, it, you know, he does line up well against Judge and Stanton and Sanchez, so... You know, there is that sort of saving grace. If he can get through those guys, it might look a little <clears> bit better for him. Um, but yeah, my focus would be on Sonny Gray. I expect to have yeah. a little bit of him. It's just so hard with so many 
I mean, I can name like eight pitchers in and around his price that I think are decent. So I think ownership is going to be all over the place, particularly on FanDuel. Bats yeah. wise, I don't really have much of anything in this game that I would want to like go out of my way to target. Um, Me, Curtis Granderson, I guess, at the top of the Blue Jays order, but I don't see a ton of one-off stuff here. Yeah, I don't see a ton that I love here for bats too. That's that's why I'm kind of on both pitchers. Um, and the Yankees are always going to have a high total at home, and there's some wind blowing out. So Estrada, super scary play. Like that would be, um, don't play Estrada unless you're willing to have a guy get blown up and, and ruin your lineup. But I think he does have like okay upside here if he's missing bats like he has been the last couple starts. I'll tell you what, you'll uh, you'll be in the minority if he does well. Yeah, yeah. Because he's not going to be owned. No, I, I don't think he will be. And, like, the, the other guy that I like is Lance Lynn, and I, I think he's a, a better play. Lance Lynn's a better play than Estrada tonight, so I don't know if I'll get to Estrada, but I just wanted to maybe shy away from some Yankees bats and not blindly stack against him. Gotcha. Yeah, I'd, I mean, Yankees bats for me, like, if I were playing anybody, it would be Stanton. As a one-off, but I don't expect to really have much exposure to either of these teams again. And that's kind of crazy to me. I would have expected to have um, more Yankees bats, but like I don't really love Gardner's price. I don't. I definitely don't like Gregorius. No. Almost at all. So it would be you know Judge Stanton Sanchez, and I would just sort of be praying that one of them goes yard. Right. That's. That's where I'm at. I think it would be actually judge for me first, but they're super expensive on DK. Yeah. And if I want to pay up for pitching, which I do at least at one spot, I'm not going to get to these Yankees bats. Yeah, there are be- there are better stacks out there tonight. I'm anxious to see their ownership because um, in theory they should be good, but I just think that they're priced a bit high. Yeah. Huh. <clears throat> and I really like. I try not to look at anything before. Like, I load everything up. I kind of want to just let everybody have my fresh take when I do this sort of stuff. I would have expected to like the Yankees a lot, and I don't. So, it's always fun. It throws me off immediately. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so, I guess a little bit of sunny gray, and that's about it for me. Yeah. Phillies and Pirates. Uh, Phillies with a 4.1 run implied total. Pirates, 4.0. A 51% chance to win for the Phillies. Ben Lively uh, going for Philadelphia. Ivan Nova going for Pittsburgh. Um, I I don't want any Nova on FanDuel. Preposterously priced at 8300 where he's the seventh most expensive pitcher. No, thank you. Um, I could get to some Ben Lively as like a super cheap pitching option. He's nothing great. Uh, it's not a direction like I would really want to go or anything. Um, just for his price, it's not outlandish for how the line shakes out, but I won't touch either of these guys, or at least I don't expect to. Yeah, these are two guys that both K lefties at under 12% since the start of last year, and Nova gets hit pretty hard by him. Uh, 350 Woba about, he's much better against righties. So for the Phillies would be the lefties bats. Yeah. The Carlos Santana is under 4K on, on DraftKings for some reason. Nick Williams can't seem to break the the 3K barrier, so he's a guy that I'm going to look at for 2,900 as a as a cheap one off. <laughs> and then um, on the Pirates side, I like some of the lefties here. I wish the weather was a little bit better, wind blowing in and 50 degrees. So I don't know that I want to stack up the Pirates, but I do like Polanco, Frazier, um, Bell, and Dickerson. So. Like a, a pirate stack doesn't really get me excited, but four out of the first five are lefties, and those are all guys I, I do like individually in this matchup. Yeah, uh, pirates pricing on DK looks really nice. Um, a yeah. stack of like Frazier, I don't love Polanco's price, but Frazier, Marte, Bell, Dickerson all grade out really well, and then you know, obviously you can take Polanco when you're already getting four of those guys, and he's right. good. So. Mm-hmm. I'd have no problem uh, with a pirate stack. I don't love it as much on FanDuel. 
like Dickerson's price is the same as it is on DK, so that's a bit too high for me. Marte is only a couple hundred dollars cheaper, so it's still like not the best pricing for me. I'd be way more likely to have them on DK than I would on FanDuel. And then for the Phillies, again, Carlos Santana's price is phenomenal. Another guy that I like, I'm fine having in any sort of situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have much interest in a Philly stack either. Uh, one thing to touch on for these first three games that we talked about, no threat of rain whatsoever, so um, we don't have to worry about that. You do want to pay attention to wind and things, but in terms of like the game actually happening, uh, barring any natural disasters, it doesn't appear that like that's going to be an issue. Right. Yep. Yeah, just there's not like these first couple games, just not a ton of like really fun stuff to look at. I'd play Carlos Santana as a one-off. I would take a peek at a pirate stack on DK, and that is it. Like again, exposure is going to be relatively low here. Me too. Um, no interest in any of the pitchers. No. Um, really lefty bats all around in this game for me. They pretty much all make sense in the top five for both teams. Ben Lively with the steamer projected 5.15 FIP is uh, you know, not the best. No. But you don't want to give up that many runs. You're probably going to lose a whole lot. So, yeah, yeah uh, find a different game, guys. I promise it'll yeah. be better for you. I don't really promise, but, like, it should be. It should be. Yeah. Rays and Twins. Uh, Rays with the 4.1 run implied total. Twins, 3.7. It's a 54% chance to win for the Rays. Uh, Chris Archer on the hill for the Rays. Lance Lynn going for the Twins. Um, you have mentioned Lance Lynn as your potential second pitcher. I like Chris Archer on FanDuel a little bit, so we're running head on into each other. I wouldn't touch Archer on DK. He's uh, significantly more expensive. So Archer on FanDuel, 8,000. Lynn is 7,100. Uh, Archer on DK, 8,800. Lynn, 6,400. So $2,400 gap between the two on DK, only 900 on FanDuel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Archer would be a guy, is a guy that I expect to have uh, probably a little bit more than the field on uh, tonight. Talk me into Lance Lynn. Yeah, Lynn, he's always had trouble getting lefties out. Uh, 50% hard hit rate against lefties this year. Uh, but there aren't really many scary lefties in this race lineup. So you got Denard Span off the top, Joey Wendell. I don't know if he's got much power. Malik Smith does not have much power. Brad Miller may or may not be in the lineup. And then he's been really good against righties. It's a good park. Um, he's 13th in whisper swing this year among starters, which is above guys like Bundy, DeGrom, Paxton, Garrett Richards, Jay Happ, like Godley, Granke. So all these guys that we, we think are pretty good pitchers. And 6,400 is too cheap. So the run total looks good for Tampa Bay, only four runs about. Yeah. And it's a good park, and we don't have to worry about rain because it's indoors. Oh, and this game's yeah. not in Cuba or Saudi Arabia no, or something ridiculous no, that we don't know no. about today? I'll check, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's being played in Florida. Yeah, so. it's, it's at the trough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but, like, Lance Lynn is a guy that I never, never play. But the slate kind of calls for it, and he's he's been okay. So, I mean, he actually has been better than okay. Like, missing bats at the 13th best rate in the league is, is really good. Okay, yeah, like, I'm with you on the lefty bats not exactly being terrifying here. Uh, Joey Wendell with the steamer projected 282 on base, 361 slugging. Okay. Not a lot of uh, pop there. No. Malik Smith with the projected 358 slugging. Again, not so great. Um, we touch on this basically every show that the Rays have less than zero in the term pop, I guess. Yeah. It's kind of not I mean, a lot of guys giving the ball a ride. Um, right. I, f- I feel like I should be a little bit more nervous about the Twins bats. You know, Maurer, Rosario, Morrison, Kepler. Uh, but I'm hoping that Archer's stuff wins out. And that I'm hoping the line moves a little bit more in the Rays direction. If that can get to like 55, 56%, I think it's going to make Archer look really good. Um, he's just a guy that at 8,000 where I've got a decent chance at a win. And um, 
Like, he's got pretty decent stuff. So, I'll see him a little bit more. There are probably three guys that I think are going to show up an overwhelming amount of time. Uh, but I'm going to be fine with any Archer lineups that pop up for me. Yeah, Archer for me, I don't think I'm going to use. He's got He's got really, really good strikeout stuff. He could go out and strike out eight or ten batters here. It wouldn't shock me, but there's just too many lefties here, I think, for me. Um, like Maurer, Rosario, Morrison, Kepler, like those guys all have some power and don't strike out a lot outside of, of Morrison. Um, just too many lefties here. And then the righties he gets are Sano and Dozier. And those aren't two righties that I'm thrilled to play or thrilled to have my, my pitcher going up against. No, uh, uh, Sano, Sano does, it doesn't matter what hand you throw it. He'll make that ball go a long way. Right. Like, all you got to do is make one mistake, and you can say that about anybody, but I just am a little bit scared about the matchup overall for Archer. And like I said, I'm probably not going to be in this price range on DraftKings, 8800 Yeah, I don't. The, the price is a little bit more difficult on DK. Um, I, I wouldn't be as thrilled going that direction. Yeah. Uh, Hitter-wise, I'm good on, like, basically everybody here. You can sneak into a raise stack if you want to get really cheap and contrarian, but I, I don't really like much of anything. I, I, get, I feel like you would be into a, a twin stack to leverage against Archer. Um, I don't know. I mean, probably not just because there's... Like I, I don't love these guys individually. These these twins bats. Like I don't really want to use Maurer in a big park. Gotcha. Um, not the biggest Rosario guy. Morrison is a good one off for twenty nine hundred, but you got to play him at first base, and first base is always stacked. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, like I think Archer pitch is fine, but he it's just the strikeout upside that I'm a little bit scared of. I'm with you. Uh, for me, it's just Archer in this game. Um, at some point in time, I'll probably talk about a bat that I like in this video, <laughs> since it's barely yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, but we just haven't gotten to the the stacks portion of this show yet. Yep. Yeah, I'm good. I don't have anything else to really touch on here. Yeah, me neither. Uh, Tigers and Royals. This will be game two of their doubleheader. Um, as of right now, this is the pitching matchups that are set up. Um, I've already we've already seen it flip once for the Tigers, so you know, in theory, it could happen again. Uh, Tigers 4.4 run implied total, Royals 4.1. It's a 52 percent chance to win for the Tigers. Daniel Norris uh, on the hill for Detroit. Jason Hamill going for Kansas City. Um, I I won't have either of these guys. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Is it? Wait, did we say it was Junis or Hamill for Detroit? I've got Junis in the early game. Okay, yeah, and I've got Junis in the late game. But it, either way, it, it doesn't really change a ton for me because Junis is 8,300. So whichever game he starts, like, obviously you could play him in the showdown or whatever if he if he goes there. But, like, Hamill's not a guy I'm, I'm looking to use. Um, but it does make a little bit of difference for the Detroit bats if, if it's Hamill in this late game. So... Um, like I would like Cand uh, Candelario, Castellanos, and then Miguel Cabrera has been crushing the ball over 95 mile an hour average exit velocity on the season. So those will be three bats that I want to use against Jason Hamill. So I went to Pinnacle to check the odds. They've got the early game as Junis and Fulmer and the late game okay. as Norris and Hamill. Okay, cool. Yeah, so just those three Detroit bats for me against Hamill. And they're basically the exact same line right now, too, so I don't really care who plays. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm with you, though, on the Tigers bats. I'd be I'd be more than okay with a Tigers stack. Uh, Martin, Candelario, uh, Miggy, Castellanos, who I really wish just came up as Nick Castellanos in the fan graphs naming convention. Nicholas. But, yeah, it's yeah. always Nicholas. So that's the, the naming conventions that I use. I grab it from fan graphs. Uh, and then Victor Martinez, like um, any combination of those first five, I'm in on fan graphs, or on fan duel. See, now I've got fan graphs on the tongue. Um, I think they look fine on both sites as well. So no problem going that direction. I'm very rarely going to be nervous about Jason Hamill, who I feel like has been in the league for 20 years. 
Yeah, I feel I, like I've I, got like a 1991 Don Russ card with Jason Hamill on it, but I know that they don't. <laughs> um, yeah. I'd even be fine with, a, like, well, okay. I would have been fine with a little bit of the Royals' bats if their bats lined up better against the Tigers, but they just happen to be, like, relatively lefty-heavy for the guys that matter the most. So if it is Daniel Norris, I, I, I get a little bit less intrigue out of the Royals in, in Game 2 of this doubleheader. So my focus would probably just be the top part of the Tigers' bats, and even then it's not going to be, like, an overwhelming amount of stacks of Tigers. Yeah, Norris has a uh, 42% hard contact rate against righties over the last year and change. Um, so I think Jorge Soler for yeah. 3,000 is a good guy for um, – he's got a decent chance at a home run, I think, off Norris. Just a guy that strikes out a ton, but he, he's swinging for the fences every time, and he does have quite a bit of power. Yeah. So that would be one guy I'm looking at just for his price. Like, <clears throat> I think he'll be lower owned than like a Nick Williams, who's around the same price. Um, and he's got just as good of a chance to hit a homer. So Solaire one-off is, is really all I have for Kansas City bats. Agreed. All righty, Braves and Mets. Braves with a 3.5 run implied total. Mets four on the dot. It's a 56% chance to win uh, for the Mets. Sean Newcomb going for the, uh, Atlanta. Uh, Noah Syndergaard going for New York. Um I would like to be really excited that Newcomb's going, but having that matchup against Syndergaard is probably just going to make him look bad. I like Syndergaard a little bit tonight. Um, there are There's another stud I like way more. Um, hint, hint, it's Verlander. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'd be fine with either Kershaw or Scherzer as well. I'd, I'll probably have a minimal amount of Syndergaard, oddly enough, even though... Uh, the Braves have not exactly been hitting quality right-handed pitching very well this year. Right. As evidenced by Scherzer and Strasburg a week ago, just embarrassing them on back-to-back -back nights. Uh, Syndergaard looks perfectly acceptable on DK. I have no problem running him out there. I just think that there are slightly better options. Yeah, Syndergaard is the cheapest of the four studs, Verlander, Scherzer, Kershaw, and... Syndergaard himself, so he's the cheapest, so there's quite a bit to like here, I think, in this matchup. He's top five in whiffs per swing this year. He's got a swinging strike rate near 17 on the season, 24.8 swinging strike percentage last game, which is absurd. Um, there are a lot of lefties, but like Freddie Freeman could still be banged up when he got hit on the wrist a couple of days ago. Yeah. Um, so that's really the, the only bat that I'm scared of. Uh, Syndergaard is one of the better pitchers in the MLB, and I have no issue using him. It's just going to be tough to decide between Syndergaard and Verlander for me. I honestly have, have no idea where I'm going at this point, because I think you can make a case for both of them as well as both the guys in the Washington and LA game. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I wouldn't touch a Braves bat no. ever in mm -hmm. this situation. Just... I don't expect it to end well, particularly as a Braves fan. And having a, a best friend as a Mets fan, I'll, I'll know about it pretty pretty quickly. Um, Mets bats. Uh, I mean, I guess I can get to something. Cespedes, Flores, Frazier's price sucks. Uh, as Drupal Cabrera slotted in the five hole now, potentially. Price is up a bundle on FanDuel. I don't like Newcomb get can get into trouble. He's he doesn't have the most con or the best control in the world. Um, can miss bats. He's he's got some stuff, but I don't know. Like nobody's really standing out outside of like I think Wilmer Flores could be a fun play on DK with the the second and third eligibility in a relatively low price. Um, but I'm not really wild about any of the bats in this game. Yeah, I'm sort of there with you. Uh, Newcomb's the guy that I've been okay using since he's come up. Um, I think he's pretty good, but he does get in trouble a lot with with walks, and he'll give up some power. So Cespedes for 4,300 is a guy that I like quite a bit. Flores, like you mentioned, dual position eligibility on DraftKings, and he's only 3,200, and 
he's really, really good against lefties. Um, Frazier crushes lefties, and Estrubal Cabrera crushes lefties. So a four-man Mets stack I like a little bit here. Good weather and a pitcher that can get wild at times. Yeah, I, I want to get to that. I really do. I just, mm, I really, really hate Todd Frazier's price, and I really, really hate Estrubal Cabrera's price on FanDuel. <laughs> what are they on FanDuel? Frazier's 4,100 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK, and then Cabrera's 3,900 on FanDuel, 4,000 on DK. Yeah, so just, you know, comparison shopping. If you're playing both sites, stack up the Mets on DK. Yeah. And... You know, it's going to be really contrarian, probably, or really low-owned, I should say. Nothing's really that contrarian on this slate. Really low-owned on FanDuel. So, I mean, you've got, you've got options for sites. Like, you don't have to play right. just on FanDuel, just on DraftKings. If you want to stack up a team and there's a huge price discrepancy, you can go with where they're cheaper. Completely agree. Uh, yeah, I, I've been riding that as Drupal Cabrera train with you for a while, but now that he's up to 3900 I actually want to take a look and see how much that's cl been climbing on FanDuel, at least. Oh, I'm, he probably started at like 26 on the season to start the season. Let's check it out. Come on, Fantasy Cruncher. Be faster. There's no way anybody's on here at 8.30 in the morning. I should have carte blanche to do what I want. Uh, Cabrera. So, he was 2,700 on mm. April 8th. So 12 days later, he's now 3900 oh, Yeah. But he's been he going up be. like two or $300 every day since he got to 3900 now. He had dropped back down to 36 a couple days ago, but now he's back up to 39 So He's good. Yeah. I mean, he's he's just a good hitter. Yeah, I mean, we were he was in like spotlight hitters and stuff when he was 2700 yeah. and 2900 But price is everything, people. You got to remember yeah. that that stuff changes. If Mike Trout was... Twelve grand, you would never play him. If he was right. three thousand, you'd play him every day. Price matters. Right. Uh, yeah, that, that's probably it for this game. Go Braves. Keep rolling. I wish I would have had more of you yesterday. It would have been really beneficial. But I'll take the victory and the hit to my wallet. Uh, Rangers and Mariners. Rangers four point seven run implied total. Mariners four point three. 53% chance to win for the Rangers. Uh, Mike Miner going for Texas. Felix Hernandez going for Seattle. Um, I'm avoiding both of these guys. Uh, I do like Mike Miner as a person. I've got a Mike Miner rookie card somewhere on a shelf that is over here to my left uh, as a former Brave. But uh, Felix looks really bad as a play today, in my opinion. And uh, I'm way more likely to have a bunch of bats here than than any pitching. Yeah, this one's pretty simple for me. Uh, no no interest in either pitcher. Um, on the Texas side for bats, gotta love Joey Gallo for four thousand here. Yep. Adrian Beltre super cheap. It's, it's righty righty, but not, I'm really not worried about Felix Hernandez. Um, so th I think three four five with Mazzara, Beltre, and Gallo are. I, I love that as a stack. And then Chu up top is cheap. Profar, if he's batting second, is super cheap on DraftKings. So I think this will be a pretty popular place for people to go. But I definitely like the stack. And then on the Seattle side, Nelson Cruz for 4,300 against a lefty is pretty ridiculous. And then Segura at a shortstop position uh, for 3,400 is a guy that I like quite a bit too. Completely with you there. Uh, I was hoping you would would have said pro far even earlier i've been riding for pro far for uh like a decade now <laughs> so yeah yeah did he not play last year like uh, he's been hurt on and off okay. for like five years he just yeah. he can't get it together he's still so young though that's the crazy part of it all like he's still only 25 but i feel like i was reading about him like sitting on the can in like my college housing <laughs> Reading yeah, old the, Baseball America books and stuff. Like, he originally I, came up for the Rangers in 2012. Okay. He's just, like, he's been around forever, but he, I mean, he's never had more than 324 plate appearances in a season. Missed all of 2015. Like, the dude just can't stay healthy, ever. 
But, Got I it. mean, he was like a former... I want to say that he was Keith Law's number one prospect at one point, but I could be wrong there. Uh, he was definitely a top five guy for the better part of his time in the minors. So, like, he just never was able to put it together from a health perspective. Yeah. I like um, him a lot tonight. I, 2,200 on FanDuel, so I'm in for that a lot. Yeah, and he's only 27 on DraftKings, shortstop and second base eligible. So Ranger Stack is one that, that I really like here, uh, one through five. And, yeah, I think, I think I'd stop it there um, with Gallo. Yeah. But Gallo, one of my favorite plays of the night, actually. Yeah, I like Gallo, too. Uh, he grades out really well for me on both sites. 3,500 on FanDuel, 4,000 on DK. Honestly, I'd be fine. This will sound crazy, but like I'd be fine going Guzman instead of Gallo as a way to differentiate that stack. Uh, you know, Guzman should have some power. Uh, you know, prospect lefty bat, uh, I would imagine, will be significantly less owned. So if you were really looking to be like a little bit different... Swapping in Guzman could be interesting. I don't love the price or anything like that. Um, just talking about getting that sort of, you know, lefty-righty matchup that most people won't probably touch. Yeah. Uh, but basically, I'm in for Chu, Mazzara, Gallo, Profar, and I'll take Adrian Beltre every day. I don't care what the matchup looks like. I just like that dude. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and then for the Mariners, you know, I'd prefer their best hitters to not be lefties in this scenario, but... It's not as if Mike Miner is uh, making me like quake in my boots. Yeah. Uh, so I don't. I wouldn't have a problem having Cano or Seager as part of a stack with like Cruz and Segura, but it's not the cleanest stack in the world if you want him to do it. Cruz, obviously, if you can get him against a lefty, you want to do it. He's doing yeah. matching lefties for a very long time now. Um, 3500 on FanDuel, 4300 on DK. The price is perfectly fine. Uh, if you want to use him as a one-off, uh, that's very, very possible tonight. As, as good of a matchup as you're going to get for him. Uh, but I'd be more likely to have a full stack of the Rangers than a full stack of the Mariners just because of the way the bats line up. Yeah, and I forgot to mention Mitch Haniger. I, I like him a lot for 3500 outfielder on DraftKings. I think he's just underpriced and... Um, against the lefty here that I don't mind targeting against. So Cruz, Haniger, and Segura, but they're they're two, four, six in the order, and I'm not crazy about either of the lefties. If I had to choose one, it would be Cano, though. Yeah. It's always easier to take that lefty-lefty matchup if you're getting, one, Robinson Cano, who's good, and two, yeah. getting a guy at second base. I'd much rather do that than take a lefty-lefty on, like, a first base outfield type guy where... Yeah, you can you can line that match up better. Um, Hanniger's fine for me on DK. He's he's thirty two hundred on Fanduel, so he doesn't have the same sort of uh, like price gap as he does for some of the other guys. So he doesn't grade out as well for me on Fanduel, but I'd be fine with him as part of a stack. Just awesome. ignore the pitching yeah. here is the the main tenant. Yeah, that's where I'm at too. <laughs> All righty, heading back to a Brewers stack right now. Brewers and Marlins. Uh, Brewers with the 5.1 run implied total. As of right now, it's the highest total that isn't in cores. Um, Marlins 4.1. Uh, it's a 60% chance to win for the Brewers. Julius Chassin going uh, for Milwaukee. Trevor Richards going for the Marlins. Um, I like Chassin tonight, which is going to be really crazy. But he's he's lo like the lowest salaried pitcher on FanDuel. <laughs> Even though he's 7,300 and in the middle of the yeah. back on DK. He's only 5,500 on FanDuel, and there's 60% chance to win. So, like, I have to look at him just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it more on FanDuel. On DraftKings, he's 7,300, and I think he will get some ownership here. So but that, that really doesn't interest me at all. I'd rather uh, pay 900 less for Lance Lynn. So no, no Chassin for me. Um... Nor, nor really, should there be. He looks terrible on DK, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, $7,300. You know, the Marlins aren't good or whatever, but it's not like pitchers have been just mowing through them. No. Um, so I don't really want to use Marlins bats, maybe outside of a Justin Bohr. But that's about it. Um, I think Richard, Derek Dietrich looks pretty nice at the top of the Mariner, or top of the Marlins order. 
Four point that, one run implied total is not the worst. Yeah. Twenty six hundred on FanDuel, thirty two hundred on DK. I can yeah. sneakily get to a Marlin snack, if, s- snack stack if I wanted to. Snack, yeah, uh, yeah. I think he's fine for thirty two hundred. Um, I just wouldn't be crazy about putting him in. Like, there's just so many outfielders that I want to use tonight that I don't think I really need to to go to him. And there's a couple guys cheaper that I like over him. Yeah, I mean, nobody's going to be on the Marlins bats, so right. it's not like, if you were playing a bunch of lineups like I do, um, you don't need more than, like, two Marlins stacks to be right. with the field. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be less than 1%. Yeah, um, yeah like, if Chassin is going to be 5,500 minimum salaried pitcher on FanDuel, and they're going to be 60% chance to win, like, I have to just entertain that possibility that he has a decent game against the Marlins and provides a crazy amount of value and allows me to stack up, like, mm-hmm. the Rockies and the Cubs. And yeah. Weird stuff like <clears throat> that. So, that. Yeah, I'm with you there on, on FanDuel. Good chance for a win, so. Yeah, I, I don't know why he's priced as low as he is there. That's just kind of crazy. He could have been 6,500 and it would have looked normal and no one would freak yeah. out, but it's, I don't know. Maybe they didn't expect him to pitch. Yeah. Um, Brewers bats, uh, sign me up. I, I try to get signed up for the Brewers bats almost every day. Uh, more often than not, it works. Like yesterday, for instance, where they put up 12 runs. Um, that's what you're looking for. Monster implied total, 5.1 run. Um, I'm in for Kane. Uh, I'm absolutely in for Christian Yelich. Uh, I'm in for Shaw. I'm, I'm in for Thames. Uh, I'm in for Villar. Uh, and then if Ryan Braun has to come along for the ride, I'm cool with that on FanDuel, only 2900 He's $1,700 more expensive on DraftKings, which is bananas high. <laughs> but uh, I'm in for anything in the top six for the Brewers. Yeah, I think uh, top five probably for me, with an emphasis to the lefties. So Yelich, I love. He just hit the ball really, really hard this entire season when he's been healthy. Travis Shaw is looks like a misprice for 3800 against a righty and a bad righty at that. And then Eric Thames for 4900 Not crazy about the price, but definitely one of the first basemen that I'll be considering tonight. Yeah, Shaw's price is really weird on DK. Yeah, I, he's, just, he's just a really good hitter and he crushes righties. Um, it's not like he strikes out a ton either. It's not like he's Joey Gallo. I don't know. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in for whatever I can get from the Brewers for the however many nights in a row now. You'll probably see them in the the stacks article. I might just yep. copy and paste all the crap that I've been writing over the past two days just to save myself like two or three minutes. Just put Richard's name in there instead of whoever started yesterday. Yeah, I'll, I'll just cross. I'll, I'll use like the strike through. I won't even change anything. Yeah, uh, I'll have to insert Ryan Braun. Although I think I think he hit a dong as a pinch hit home run yesterday. He, he did. Yeah, I should have left him in. <laughs> I knew that he went yard, or at least I thought that he went yard because I saw his line. Um, I'm pulling it up now just to. He had yeah. a three run home run in like the seventh or eighth inning. Okay, that was his only at bat, too. That's hilarious. Yeah. And then Kane went nuts. Did you see how Kane scored? Like, or like how Kane was getting his points early? No. I saw the score was. It might have been 3 nothing early. Maybe I'm thinking about it wrong. Uh, I have it here in front of me, so I just want to make sure that I read it off correctly. So I was like, oh, nice. Like, things are going well for Kane. <laughs> the first scoring uh, thing was Yelich caught stealing. Um, Kane scored on the, the caught oh. stealing in the bottom of the first. I was like, okay, you know, whatever. Runs a run. And then he scored on a wild pitch in the bottom of the third. Like, And then and then didn't he homer after that? Uh, I think so. Yes. He yeah. Did. But, like, to get two runs on a caught stealing and a wild pitch, so, like, nothing... I have a, I have a Brewer stack, and nobody else is getting any of the benefit of, like, picking up any RBI because dude's scoring on, like, flute plays. I was yeah, so it's a skill game. Yeah. Skill game. I was so pissed. I was like, come on, man. <laughs> what, are you going to score on, like, a hit batsman now, too? Come yeah, on. exactly. So, yeah, so I stack Walking up the Brewers. Around. Um... You know, try to avoid the Marlins. It shouldn't be too difficult. <laughs> yeah, there's just not a lot to love on the Marlins as a whole. No, not not so much. It, they're just—it's a sad team. Yeah. 
No one's going to go to that. Well, at least it's Friday. People will be more likely to go to a Brewers-Marlins game, I guess. I, I guess, but I, you wouldn't catch me there. What's the weather supposed to be like? Oh, yeah, dome. Doesn't matter. It'll probably be pretty chilly in, in Milwaukee, though, so. That's okay. You just, you just drink more. Isn't that yeah. how you do it? Yeah, that's how we do it here, too. So. Uh, we'll move on. White Sox and Astros. Uh, I believe this is the game that doesn't have a line yet. I'm going to double check it now just in case it came out while we were talking. Okay, so we actually need to have a quick conversation about this. Uh, production meeting on the air. Uh, do you have Giolito in? I do or not. Do you have Shields? I had Shields. Okay, so it's that's, Giolito that's on the why. Sportsbook website. Okay, that's why. That's why there's no line yet. Right. Um, so let me check and see if Pinnacle has it as Giolito as well. All right, so that changes a little bit. Oh, it's not even going to be here. Yeah, so I don't know if it's Giolito or Shields. Well, if it's on the sports book, it, it should be. Well, it, so it's on like the, the line aggregating website, but there's not a line anywhere. Now it just switched to undecided. <laughs> okay. It, like it I, literally, I, as I'm clicking on this, it went from El Giolito to you undecided. Okay. I'd like to yeah. know what undecided's first name is. I have a feeling it's undecided. It's, it's just like, like bowl bowl. Yeah. Um, so actually, I mean, I thought Giolito had been better than than what he is. Just pulling up some of his some of his stuff. It's um, I, he's definitely not a guy that that I'm scared to stack against and. Like, I just have this thing where I just want to stack the Astros every single slate. Yeah. And I, th I think today is going to be another slate where I they're probably going to end up on my lineup again if I can get to them. They're really expensive on DK, especially Springer and Correa. But uh, if it's Shields, like, awesome. Everyone's going to know that, that they're a good play or whatever. If it's Giolito, like middle of the pack and whisper swing, um, it's been hit hard a couple of his starts. Whip is about 140. Uh, you could definitely go to an Astro stack here once again. Um, I, I don't really downgrade them if if it's Giolito. So love the Astros once again. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I just ran the numbers for Giolito. I'm going to switch it back to Shields now and see if there's any major differences. Just to touch on it for everybody. Um, yeah, it, it'll be marginally different whether it's Shields or Giolito. And for me, um, it'll be very, very slightly better if it's Shields, if you want to stack the Astros. But they're, it's basically a coin flip. So I'm going to leave Shields in for right now. It's not going to make a difference. Uh, you don't want to start Giolito. You don't want to start Shields. So it doesn't matter from that regard. And I don't think it changes anything for whether or not you want to stack the Astros or not. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I love the, the lineup from top to bottom just in general. Like, they're going to have times where they bust out for 13 runs. And, like, they're going to go weeks where they're just, like, going nuts every, every night. Like last year we saw it. Um, it's just such a good lineup. And when a few of them get locked in at the same time and they run into a few average to below average pitchers, they're just going to crush them. Yeah. So I'm not saying that they're going to get hot tonight, but I, I certainly think there's a chance, whether it's Shields or Giolito. So um, I want to be in on the Astros. I've been in on them all year, and they've cost me a bunch of money. But it's just <laughs> an, it seems like they're in a good spot every single night. And maybe that's because they've got guys from both sides of the plate that can just mash. But I don't know why, like why they're not hitting as well as they should be right now. Yeah, I'm 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 perfectly fine with an Astro stack. My main takeaway for this is that Verlander is my favorite pitcher on the board by far. By far. By far. All right, let's hear it. Um, sixty. Well, I'll touch on it from Fanduel to start. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sixty-four percent chance to win. Love it. White Sox implied total three point one is uh, tied for second best or second worst, I guess, on the slate. 
And the only reason that it's like that is because the Dodgers and Nats are playing each other and throwing two of the five best pitchers, maybe two of the two best pitchers in baseball. Yes. So that's a low total for a completely different reason. The White Sox are just simply not supposed to be very good today. Um, you know, I expect Verlander to miss bats. Uh, not a ton of, like, lefty pop on the White Sox. I don't think that Verlander is too worried about Moncada, even though I like Moncada. He's not like that sort of hitter. Uh, only other lefty bat projected to be in the top of the order is going to be Delmonico. Again, not a guy that Verlander is going to be quaking about. Uh, being able to get Garcia, Abreu, and Davison, you know, righty, 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 lines up perfectly for Verlander. So for me, um, it's a much easier, at least on FanDuel in particular, it's a much easier opportunity to get a win I don't have to parse through thinking, do I think Kershaw or Scherzer is a better option? And then I just think that Verlander is naturally a better option than Syndergaard. Um, for DK, he's not as overwhelming since the win isn't as important. Uh, it kind of brings him back down to the pack of everybody. Uh, so I would have I don't have any problem with Scherzer, Kershaw, Verlander, Syndergaard on, on DK. I would go to Verlander as a priority. Um, just because of how bad the White Sox are. Yeah. But for me, yeah, Verlander is going to be the guy that's in, like, everything for me. That's um, that's that's fair. I mean, I love Verlander tonight. The White Sox are second in swing strike rate as a team on the year, second in swing percentage, and – or, yeah, second in swing percentage and fourth in O-swing percentage this year. So they're just – anytime you get a righty that's got really good strikeout stuff against them, you got to at least give the pitcher a look. And obviously we know Verlander's history um, can strike out either side. Like you said, Delmonico, not that scary of a lefty bat. Um, I'm not scared of Yomer Sanchez. Moncada is scary right off the bat just because he's been hitting the ball so hard. But strikeout rate is still way up. Um, just a really, really free-swinging team. I mean, the White Sox are going to be a scary matchup, uh, but I don't think like Verlander is going to be overwhelming chalk on either site. So I think he is in the best spot of any of these pitchers. Got the best chance for a win, and even if he does give up a couple of runs, I think he can um, get you there with 25-ish points on DraftKings, um, just because there's so much strikeout upside here against the White Sox. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly excited for it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, if you love them that much, you should be pumped that there's three other studs, like huge names, that are going to take ownership away from him. Because I, I think he's in the best spot as well. Now, that could this could change a little bit. Uh, admittedly, I made up this line, but I expect the Astros to be pretty sizable favorites in this game, whether it is Shields or Giolito, so... I don't see it moving too much further than that, and it would have to move dramatically for Verlander to not be the best option on FanDuel because of that 64. You know, like, it would have to be, like, 54 for him to not be the best play on FanDuel, and it's not going to drop that much. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, so sign me up for Astros Bats. Um, Sign me up for Verlander. Don't sign me up for anything that's in, uh, in Chicago. Agreed. Get to talk about another pitcher I like a lot tonight. Cardinals hosting the Reds. Cardinals 4.8 run implied total. Reds 3.4. 65% chance to win for the Cardinals. Uh, Michael Waka on the hill for St. Louis. Brandon Finnegan, who I believe went to ECU, uh, on the hill for Cincinnati. Uh, so if you don't like Verlander and you don't like what I had to say there, uh, Waka is like the cheaper version of Verlander for me tonight. Um, I like him a lot because of his chance to pick up a win on FanDuel and for the fact that the Reds are uh, like absolutely atrocious. And for Waka on DK, he would be the guy that I would take as... like Verlander-Waka would be my immediate first pair of two guys, and then I would, I would tweak from there. Yeah, I get the Waka play. Um... 7200 that's a pretty good price. I think I prefer Lance Lynn over him a little bit. Um, but Vegas likes Waka's chance to get a win. And, I mean, it still matters on DK, too. Yeah. Uh, I think he can rack up a decent amount of strikeouts. I don't expect him to go past, like, 
six innings. Right. But for 7,200, that's really all you need. Six innings, like four, five strikeouts, and just don't get blown up, really. And you should have a good chance to pick up a win. So I get the walk of play. I have a um, for six and a third, so we're on the same page. Yeah. Um, and, he, and he's gone, I think, four, five, and five innings, if I remember. Let's see. Yeah. But yeah, four, two thirds, five innings, five innings. So if he goes five innings, five strikeouts, and an earned run or two and gets a win, then you're you love that for seventy two hundred. Yeah. Um, I do think I prefer Lynn over him though. Okay. Um, and I don't. I'm not the biggest Lance Lynn guy, but like I can't argue with the numbers. I don't have a huge problem so with that on DK. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Finnegan? And the, the, the St. Louis bats, because I'm not on any Cincinnati bats, really. No, no Cincinnati bats for me. Um, what do I think about Cardinals bats? I love Dexter Fowler. But I mean, I, I can just insert that audio from every video we do. Yeah. Um, I don't love Fam's price on FanDuel. He looks a lot better on DK. They look like a really nice stack on DraftKings. Okay. Uh, they're they're a less interesting stack on FanDuel from a pricing perspective. I like them in general. Four point eight run implied total is really nice today. Um, so like getting Fam Fowler Ozuna, uh, you know Jose Martinez is a hundred dollars more expensive on FanDuel than DK. So that's kind of a bummer. And then most people will probably be avoiding a little bit more of Matt Carpenter because of the lefty lefty matchup. But I'm perfectly fine with it. 3300 on FanDuel. I'll take my chances as part of a stack. Yeah, I, I love love the Cardinals bats here. I think they're a the top three stack for me easily. Okay. Um, That's a unique one. You want to write the stacks article today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Finnegan, uh, like I, I, he's another guy that I want to be like, I want him to be a good pitcher that I could use for cheap. Um, he, he was fourth in Whisper Swing last year in a pretty small sample um, up with guys like Scherzer. He, he was almost 33% Whisper Swing rate last year. He only threw 238 pitches. So, I mean, really, really small sample. But um, he's a guy that I'm going to be monitoring. Like he, And he just pitched against St. Louis in his last start and gave up six earned runs, five earned runs, six earned runs. Something I was looking at the game logs yesterday. But... Um, like all these righties is just bad news for him, yeah. uh, and I think they're just going to tee off here. Ozuna, Jose Martinez, two of my favorite bats on the entire night. Yadi Molina is hitting lefties really hard. Um, if Fam's in the lineup for forty eight hundred, I don't mind that price. Um, it could be Harrison Bader. Uh, he Bader got the start yesterday, and he's only twenty nine hundred. So if he's somehow in the lineup, I really like that. Paul DeJong is forty one hundred. Um, and then Dexter Fowler, one of my favorite outfield plays. So I like pretty much everyone on St. Louis. Finnegan, Finnegan's a guy that can get really, really wild and give it up to righties. So I, I think Jose Martinez, one of the best chances on the night to hit a home run, as well as Ozuna. Um, so those will be two guys that will be tough for me to fade. I'm with you. Fowler, 3,100 on FanDuel is just um, amazing. He's going to be a guy that shows up a lot for me as like mm-hmm. my one-off guy outside of the stacks. Uh, Finnegan's line against the Cardinals from April 14th. Not that you should only look at this, but four and a third, six hits, five runs, four Ks, four walks, two dongs. Yeah. He, I mean, he, and he's going to walk a ton of guys. Like, he, yeah. he's just going to be really wild. Uh, and I, I think he just gets crushed again here tonight. Yeah, I, I, I like the Cardinals bats. They've got better pricing on DK. I'd be more likely to go that direction. Um, but for me, I want to have some Cardinals. And I want to have, like, a decent... I, I want to be heavier than the field on Waka, on FanDuel. Okay, that's fair. This one will be interesting. Rockies and Cubs. course Field Alert. Rockies 5.3 run implied total, Cubs 5.2, uh, 51% chance to win for the Rockies, John Gray going for Colorado, Kyle Hendricks going for Chicago. Um, I don't want either of the pitchers. Yeah, no pitchers for me in Coors. It's a huge slate. You don't really need to get cute here. 
Um, on a different slate, I think Gray for 6,600 would make sense when he wasn't facing the Cubs, even in Coors. But Agreed. Um, you can get to Gray with lefty power, and the Cubs have lefty power in the top of their lineup with Hap, Rizzo, and Schwarber. So those would be three guys that I like as one-offs. Um, I wonder when Chris Bryant's going to start hitting. It feels like he just hasn't done much, and he's 5,500. Um, getting the Coors bump, but um, yeah, it, I don't know. Am I remembering, remembering that wrong with Bryant? Like, is, has he hit, hit well? Yeah, he's mashing. Okay. Slash line uh, 328, 458, 557. Okay, I'm just Wol- pulling up. Wolva 440. Wow. He's actually right. hitting better this year than he's ever hit. All right, so I'm just completely wrong on that, apparently. <laughs> Maybe it's just the home run numbers that I'm Yeah, thinking. he only has two home runs. Okay, it's because I, I follow the Cubs account on Twitter, and I always see that whenever he's hitting bombs, and it felt like last year, every other game, he was just mashing the ball. Yeah, uh, only two home so, runs here. Okay, maybe that's what I'm thinking of, but whatever, I, I was way off there. <laughs> yeah, it, weighted huh. runs created plus is 181. It's been 146 and 148 the past two years. So Yeah, so he's having a career year. Yeah, good, he's, he's hitting better job than he me. ever has before. Good job by me there. Um, <laughs> this is why you listen to us, right? Yeah. He's he's still 5,500 against Gray, who even in Coors, I, I do have some respect for him. Agreed. Uh, and then, like, I don't really want to stack either of these teams, as weird as that sounds. Hendricks can create a ton of ground balls. Um, so Blackman, I think, is a really awesome play, but he's 5,600. Yeah, he's so expensive. And they're all... There are studs to pay up for. Like, if you think this game could go nuts, and it, it is Coors, weird stuff can happen, even with two decent pitchers on the mound, then you're going to have to pay down for at least one and probably both of your pitchers to get a lot of bats in here. Yeah. So, like, the, getting as many of these guys as I can in a walk uh, lineup for me is, would be a direction I would want to go on FanDuel. Um we do. I do want to touch on the weather a little bit. Wind is blowing out, but uh, there's going to be some rain, like basically all night. Yeah. Um, so you do want to be cognizant of that. It is not the best weather uh, in Colorado as of right now. No. And it, that can change. I know in Colorado that it's the weather's pretty volatile. Um, so you're just gonna have to keep an eye on that. And it's not one of these early games. So you better have a uh, a swap in place in case the weather's looking pretty bad. Yeah, and uh, today might be an interesting day to have a baseball game in Colorado. So yeah, Merry they, Christmas. They, people might be a little too lax to be going out there and going hard, particularly yeah. if it's drizzling. So um, keep it, keep your eye on that one. Uh, might <laughs> might change some things up a little bit. Yeah, who knows. Yeah, I want to like this game a little bit more. That weather scares me. Yeah, and that's fair. I mean, any weather issues on a 15-game slate, like you can usually make a case to just cross it off. Coors is a little bit different of an animal, though. You're, if you're going to get low-owned Coors and a guy like you is making a ton of lineups, then you probably want some exposure. Yeah, it's a, t- it's a really difficult balance. So long as it looks like the game will get in, it'll be, I'll take that chance. Because yeah. I won't be on any of the pitching. I don't care as much. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, I don't know. I don't I don't want to play in the 41-degree rain in Colorado at 8 o'clock at night. That sounds right. like a real shitty night. <laughs> okay, Tony Walters is 2,500 on DraftKings. Like a, a catcher for 2,500 in Coors against a righty. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just saw that. I'm trying to make a... Syndergaard Verlander lineup and see if I can find something I like, see if it's even possible. Um, but that's a decent catcher punt, even though I, Walters I isn't the there. best hitter. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm in for either side of this game from a stack perspective. If I'm going to you know, tackle that with uh, Michael Waka, pricing on Colorado on FanDuel is, is really prohibitive, but Blackman looks nice, Cargo looks nice. Um, you know, I like Ian Desmond and Arenado if they're in the, you know, hitting in the three five spots. Yeah. Um, I like the Cubs more. Um, Hap. 
uh, Rizzo, Schwarber look great. You know, I'm happy to take uh, Chris Bryant since he's having a career year at the dish. <laughs> uh, I'm less likely to get to Wilson Contreras because I don't need to catch her, but you know, I can get to four Cubs pretty easily here. They're not. Neither of these teams are going to be my priority because of the weather. I'm hoping they don't, and their pricing is probably going to keep them a bit lower uh, for some of this stuff. But I don't have a problem grabbing them. I'm not really worried about the matchup all that much. Yeah, I'm with you there. Let's bounce to the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks hosting the Padres. 4.6 run implied total for the D-backs. 4.1 for the Padres. It's a 55% chance to win uh, for the D-backs. Matt Cuck going for Arizona, Tyson Ross going for San Diego, and I don't have any pitching in this game. I I honestly didn't know who was pitching for Arizona until now. Um, okay. So five point nine Ks per nine from Steamer, uh, four eighty one yeah. FIP. Is this just going to be a bullpen game? It, it looks like. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're going to do that against the Padres, you might as well because there's not exactly like a ton of hitting yeah so relievers so like Hosmer or um Cordero at the top of the lineup would be two guys I'm looking at just you're facing a righty um so I don't know if this is just going to be a bullpen game for Arizona or what but that's what it's looking like right now those would be the two bats for San Diego and then Tyson Ross is one of my favorite guys to stack against because of how bad he is um as a pitcher, also. Um, I didn't know where you were going with that. And I was like, are you about to talk me into Tyson Ross here? No, 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 no. Awful. No, he's one of my favorites to stack against. Yeah. He's, he gives up a ton of hard hits. Um, and then he's just awful with guys on the base paths. Like, he, he can't prevent steals at all. So, um, Kettle Marte for 3,600. Hit a homer last night. I was talking about Kettle Marte having some power against lefties. That's very happy. Um, Peralta right at the top of the lineup. Goldschmidt, I think he can steal. Um, I don't know if he does it as much anymore. And then Descalso for 2,500 is a guy that, that I'll be looking to play for sure, um, especially if I try to get this Syndergaard Verlander lineup going. Um, it's not coming along that well, so we'll see, wouldn't recommend we? it. Um, but, yeah, I, I like the the uh, Diamondback stack and Avila and Descalso super super cheap yeah uh, much like the Brewers have been in everything that I've written about for the past week uh, the Diamondbacks have been as well and it's not going to change here uh, I'm in for Peralta even though I hate his price but the dude's just been mashing the ball this year uh, Marte will be super highly owned for me 2600 at second base uh, I'm in uh, I don't nearly have to talk too much about Goldschmidt or Pollock. I don't think those guys are obviously decent plays on almost mm. every day. 3600 for Pollock is crazy low. Descalso looks good. If I were on DraftKings, I would be really interested in Avila. Um, I, you know, I have less interest in him on FanDuel, but he's still fine. Yeah. Even Jared Dyson all the way down the line is, you know, like I expect him to pop up in some of my lineups just because of the lefty-righty matchup. Uh, and if Tyson Ross is as bad as Jake says he is on holding runners, uh, Dyson's got some wheels. So, yeah, Diamondback stack again tonight, guys. I'm just living on the Brewers and D-backs. At some point in time, that'll go well for me. Yeah, and for me, it's been the Astros and the D-backs. And, man, has yeah, not like been it. that profitable, but <laughs> they've been good spots. So I'm, I keep talking myself into them. Profit, what's that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. Padres, you know, Franchi Cordero has a really nice price if you're going to go home run hunting. But I'm good for most of the Padres. Yeah. All right. A's and Red Sox. A's 4.3 run implied total. Red Sox 4.7. It's a 54% chance to win for the Red Sox. Kendall Graveman on the hill for Oakland. Drew Pomeranz going for Boston. Um, I'm fine with a little bit of Pomeranz on FanDuel. I don't see him in like an area where I would want to grab him on DK. I'd be fine with it, but like there's just there's better options that bookend him. Yeah, Pomeranz, um, he's making his season debut. 
uh, tonight against the A's, and he's a guy that can get hit a little bit by righties. I don't think I'm going to take the chance here for 7,500 yeah. on DraftKings because I'm talking about guys that I like better. I prefer Walk. I prefer Lynn. Um, so it's, it's a price thing, and the A's are a pretty scary matchup for lefties with all this righty power. Uh, Jed Lowry and Chris Davis and Chapman are all guys that I like quite a bit. Uh, just a little bit too expensive for against Pomeranz. Pomeranz, I think, is pretty good, but who knows? I mean, coming off an injury, making his first start of the season. So I don't think I want to, like, stack the A's, but there are definitely some guys at the top of the order that, that I like. Yeah, uh, I don't love the pricing on the A's tonight. Uh, Lowry, Davis, and Chapman all in general would have looked nice, but all pretty healthy price points on FanDuel in particular. Yeah. So uh, the A's aren't going to be a direction I'm going. Uh, I, I mean, at this point, I should just stack the Red Sox bats every night with the way that they're just mashing the ball every single day. Yeah. We talked about it yesterday that they had, were, what did they have, 21-1 to 1 or something in the two games against the Angels? Well, they put up eight again last night. So. Yep. Just the standard eight runs for Casual for the Red game. Sox. Um, so, like, if you want to roll out Betts and Ben and Devers and I don't know Jackie Bradley Jr. The Hanley, yeah, you, you can take them all. They're just everybody is raking for the Red Sox. Yeah. Four point seven run implied total, perfectly fine. Uh, it's not like Kendall Graveman, some dude like he he doesn't miss bats. So, uh, the last thing you want to do is be getting a lot of contact from the Red Sox. I have no problem with a Red Sox stack tonight. That that's basically exactly what I had. Like if you're if you're not missing bats with the Red Sox, you're gonna get crushed at this point. All these guys are hitting so well. Mookie Betts is probably gonna hit another leadoff home run. He he's fifty seven hundred. Like I don't like that price, but like he's just crushing everything. Yeah. Um, he's uh, slugging seven ninety seven on the year right now. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, like, they're just really expensive for me on DK. So I don't think I'll get to them because I want to pay up at pitching, like I've said a bunch of times. Um, but I, I really can't argue against them. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they put up another eight runs here. Betts is the MVP right now, right? Probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's so early to be talking about MVP stuff. But, yeah, I mean, for the first month of the season, he's got to be. 391 average. Woba, 529. That's uh, that's pretty good. You don't see it over 500 all that often unless Barry Bonds is playing. Right. Um, yeah, uh, Red Sox stack looks great. Uh, until they stop scoring eight-plus runs a game, it's, it's hard to look in a different direction. The lineup is just absolutely loaded. Yeah. And if other teams are running out guys like Kendall Graveman, I don't see it slowing down all that often. So. No, neither do I. Uh, weather looks fine in that game, um, so no concerns whatsoever. All right. All right, two more. Angels and Giants. Angels, 4.6 run implied total. Giants, 3.9. Um, it's a 57% chance to win for the Angels. Andrew Heaney on the hill for them, and Jeff Samarja going for San Francisco. Um, nowhere near Samarja. But Andrew Heaney looks pretty tasty tonight, I think. Heaney's a guy that that I'm interested in. He's he's viable here against the Giants. We've been targeting against the Giants for weeks now. Um, he's 6,000, favored to win. There's just a lot of good things to say about him. Yeah. He missed a good amount of bats in his first start, 12.9 swing strike rate. Um. Definitely a guy that I'll consider um, with the, the guys like Baca and Lind, and, or yeah, Lind. Um, so those would be the three cheap guys that I'm looking at. He's definitely one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just know that the Giants are a really good matchup for pitchers right now. Yeah, they're not hitting anything. So yeah. I'm, I'm more than okay running out some Heaney. The line works for me. 3.9 run implied total for the Giants makes me lean a little bit more towards Heaney. Sixty-three hundred dollar price point on FanDuel. Uh, you know that's great if you need to pay up for bats. If you're trying to grab Red Sox or Rockies or Cubs, like Heaney will help you fit that sort of stuff in really easily. Yeah. Um, we're both like we're not even going to talk about Samarja, right? No, making the debut, he may have a pitch count. 
I'm not sure. I mean, 7,600, there's just way more guys that I prefer, and I don't want to target against the Angels. No. Um, I don't love the Angels hitters, like, just in a one-off scenario. Um, I can be talked into a stack. I wish they had more lefty bats, or I wish, like, Otani didn't hit seventh. Yeah. But... You know, so Otani, yeah, Otani's my favorite bat here. But yeah. like you said, batting batting seventh, it's hard to play a one off for forty six hundred on DraftKings. Right. Batting seventh. Yeah, I don't. There's not really like I wanted to like the Angels more. I think they're a perfectly viable stack. They're just not like the most cost efficient play tonight. Yeah. If somebody was like, I really want to go Kins or Trout up in Pujols. Yeah, go ahead. That I mean, that's fine. I don't. Implied total's fine for it. Uh, I just... Not the cheapest stuff in the world. Right. I don't have and, anything really to add. I'm going to have a little bit of Heaney. I probably won't have much from a bat perspective here. That's... I agree. Boom. Final game. I think I'm excited to talk about it. I don't know. Dodgers and Nats. Dodgers 3.1 run implied total. Nats... 2.6 um, which is just bananas this is under 6 as a total 57% chance to win for the Dodgers Kershaw versus Scherzer top 2 guys on the board top 2 guys in salary um, if I had to pick between the two I would take Scherzer but you can't go wrong with either of these guys yeah, me too. I think Kershaw actually ranks last for me out of these uh, four guys on DraftKings. His whiff rate's down a little bit. Like, I'm, I'm not worried about him. But this Nationals lineup is, is really tough uh, for lefties. Like we talked about yesterday, Rendon, Turner, Zimmerman, Kendrick, Taylor. These guys can all hit lefties really well. Uh, maybe not Trey Turner. He, he hasn't hit much this year, but... Uh, I'm just going to assume that Trey Turner is having a career year now that you said that. Yeah. I don't know. I saw some talk on Twitter about how he just hasn't done anything. And I don't remember him doing that much. But yeah. This time you're correct. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's not slugging like a 1,000? <laughs> no. 319. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I think Kershaw ranks last. Um, 50% is not bad. Uh, Kershaw ranks last for me on these four... Stud pitchers, Scherzer's. I don't know what to do with Scherzer. He's twelve five. Yeah. I'm not really scared of these Dodgers against a guy like Scherzer. Um, I think these two rank last for me though, like third and fourth, which I'm, is weird. I'm fine with that. I'd rather have Verlander and Syndergaard. Yeah, me too. So, I'm probably now, not. I don't use... want that to come off as like a like. I will happily have some Kershaw and some Scherzer. Yeah. Too. That's not what I mean, but I would rather have Scherzer on DK, and since Scherzer's a bigger dog on FanDuel, it's harder for me to get there, um, and it mm -hmm. doesn't make me like Kershaw more, unfortunately, so I'm more likely to avoid them both on FanDuel, but it's just mostly because I love Verlander so much. If Verlander wasn't on the slate, I'd have a lot of Kershaw, Scherzer, Kershaw, Scherzer and Syndergaard. Holy hell, that's tough to say. <laughs> yeah, like I would not be surprised if any of these guys were the, the highest scoring pitcher on the night. No. But I think it makes sense to get at least one of them and two if you can figure it out. But it's really tough. Yeah, it's uh, like, I mean, we're not, it's hard for us to come up with like a lot to say about, you know, what should be the best pitching matchup in baseball for the entire season. So yep. like just sit back and watch it. They're both great. Um, I don't have the secret sauce to like figure out which one of them is going to be better tonight. Just yeah. enjoy the game. If you had to use one bat from this game, who would, who would it be? Ooh, that's a fun question. We don't ever do that. Uh, if I had to use from either side? Either side. <sighs> taking, into, taking price into account. Okay. Um, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's... Cody it's Bellinger. Not, okay. That's that's fair. 
I, it, I that could well it could just as easily be Seager, Bellinger or Seager for me is the okay. answer. Yeah, I think I would be on either Taylor or Kendrick. So okay, like if I if I had to get a, a, a cheap bat on on DK. So yeah, I just I just wanted to see if you had any strong takes because no. man, there's not really any bats that I want to use in this game. Yeah, I don't want to have either of them. <laughs> Basically. No, lie. it would be a last resort thing. Uh, all right, I'm gonna throw the. I've, I've got the projections in for DK now, so let's run some of this. Ooh. We'll see where we get. This might be very slow. Oh yeah. We're crawling here. There's just too much stuff. Yeah, and I can't even see for some reason. So. Oh, yeah, I forgot you can't see it. Um, well, after I said here we go, it's only at 10 lineups. So All right. what I'm going to do while that runs in the background is pull up my NBA sheet. Yeah. And let me click that timestamp button one last time. So we'll have timestamps in the notes now. So yay to everybody who's been asking for timestamps. I finally Sweet. implemented that. Um. I'm going to pull up the NBA sheet and just touch on my thoughts on the NBA while that DK crunch runs. <sighs> uh, do you want me to talk about some hockey? Yeah. All right. Let me pull up some of my notes here for yeah. today. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna touch on the, the other things going on. Oh, where'd it go? Uh, oh, it's, it's on my laptop. All right, so I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna walk through very, very quickly NBA stuff for tonight. Wizards and Raptors have the highest implied totals by a, a long shot, and uh, I've liked most of the guys in those games in the first uh, in the first two games. Uh, if I'm looking at the Wizards, I'm cool with having some John Wall. Uh, I'm cool with having some Beal, and uh, a little bit of Otto Porter. But if I look at Toronto. Um, once again, love, love, love Kyle Lowry, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Uh, similar sort of scenario for DeRozan, but I just prefer Lowry here. Uh, that'd be a direction that I would be going. Um, so I like all of those guys at the top end of it. Uh, if you want to take a flyer on Jonas, I totally understand. He kind of owns Washington. If I touch on the Pacers quickly... Um, I think Oladipo at 8,800 on DK is one of the better plays of the night. He's going to be uh, doing everything he can. First home game in Indiana in the playoffs for him. It's going to be like he's going to be going hard. Uh, he didn't play a ton of minutes in game two, so you know should have some relatively fresh legs. I like that. I'm fine with Thad Young too if you need someone at a slightly lower salary. Uh, for Cleveland, there's some value here. Uh, LeBron obviously is LeBron. Um, he kind of transcends analysis. Uh, if you want to take a look at Kevin Love, that's fine. Not my favorite thing in the world. Uh, if I'm playing GPPs, I would want to take a look at Corver. Uh, I don't expect Nance to continue to not shoot at all like he did in the last game where he was a slam dunk for us on FanDuel. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's sort of still in that area. Um I don't ever really love taking J.R. Smith, but in a GPP, particularly on FanDuel, where he's only $100 above the minimum, um, he's a guy that can get hot. Uh, but for me, a lot of Wizards and Raptors, it's going to be the popular uh, way to go. I like the top three guys on Milwaukee. Um, at some point in time, I'm expecting Eric Bledsoe to show up. He's been getting uh, dogged out pretty bad, claiming that he doesn't know who uh, Terry Rozier is, but... He's 6,300 on DK. He might be the best dollar-for-dollar dollar guy um, on the board. I'm anxious to see when Osimo uh, puts out his slam dunks, whether or not Bledsoe's there on DK, because he grades out incredibly well for me. And if we take one last final look at Boston, um, 7,200 for Al Horford looks really nice on DK. The DK pricing in general just looks a bit better than FanDuel. Um, 
and with the the structure of a FanDuel lineup and having to have a center, um, it's hard to not look towards Horford. Otherwise, you've got to hope that Miles Turner shows up or it's got to be one of those days where Valanciunas goes crazy. Otherwise, you're scraping the barrel with, like, Aaron Baines or Gorta. Like, I can't... It, you almost have to play Al Horford. So, that's sort of where I'm at for most of these games. My focus would be on Wizards and Raptors. And uh, if I were trying to take any, like, down-the-line value guys, I want guys that are just going to shoot the ball. So, I'm trying to avoid guys like... Like, I don't really love Monroe. Like, he should be at a lower salary point than he is. Uh, but I think... I'll regret this, and luckily it'll be jammed at the end of a baseball video, so no one will know, but I think Eric Bledsoe uh, gets his crap together tonight. That's my baseball. Or that's my basketball rant. All right. Good stuff. Give people some hockey stuff. Yeah, all right. So there's three games tonight. Um, three teams, all three home teams trying to close out the series. They're all up 3-1. So it's all game five for these teams. Um, Philadelphia at Pittsburgh. I really like the second line for Pittsburgh, the Malkin Kessel line. Uh, Patrick Hornquist is out for this game, so it'll be Kessel skating on Malkin's line. And then Sean Couturier for Philadelphia is, you know, he's banged up. He's a game time decision. Even if he plays, he's going to be banged up. So I'm not going to Philadelphia here, really. I think Nolan Patrick's fine as a $4,100 center on DraftKings. But outside of that, for Philadelphia, it's slim pickings. Uh, so I like Pittsburgh's top two lines with a lean towards the Malkin Kessel Hagelin line, and then Justin Schultz or Chris Letang on D. Minnesota at Winnipeg. Um, I think Winnipeg closes it out tonight. So it's going to be the Shifey line versus Koivu, Niederreiter, and Granlin. Minnesota shook up their lines, so make sure. You check to see what they're rolling with this morning and at pregame skate. Um, I really like uh, Winnipeg's top line against the Koivu line. Whatever line they face, they're just a force at home. Uh, the second line is also definitely in play for me. Stastny, Ehlers, and Wheeler. Or Stastny, Ehlers, and Line A. So I like both Winnipeg lines. Um, if you're looking for a contrarian stack, I think Stahl with Zucker and Coyle for Minnesota is fine. They'll probably avoid the Shifley line for Winnipeg, which is the one you want to avoid. And then Matt Dumba shooting a ton. He'd be the one guy I'd look at on D for Minnesota. On Winnipeg, there's a guy named Miku who's making his debut. He's $2,800 on DraftKings, and he's going to play in the top four D-men. So he's a guy that provides some salary relief tonight. Uh, but you obviously want to fit in Dustin Bufflin or Jacob Truba if you can. And then last game of the night, Colorado-Nashville. We're going to see the third line for Nashville go up against the top line for Colorado. Um, so I think Colorado's top line is definitely in play here. They've had some success against them on the road earlier in the series. But really, it's the top two lines for Nashville here. So I like all the home teams. I think all of them have a really good chance to close it out. And I think a five or six man stack for Nashville is certainly in play here. Love Roman Yossi, love PK Subban. Uh, Matthias Ekholm is only 4,100 on DraftKings. So if I'm like full stacking a team and going with exposure to two lines, it's going to be Nashville. I think that they light up Colorado pretty good here. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Did you say that someone is making their debut tonight? No, he's not making his debut. He's making his playoff debut. Okay. Uh, his name is his last name is Niku. And I, was like, wow, I didn't expect uh, guys so, to never have played before to come up in game yeah. five of a playoff game. <laughs> no, he he played um, for the first time two weeks ago. Oh, okay. so he played in one game and now um, he's been on the roster and it looks like he's gonna skate tonight. So I don't. Yeah, know hockey. Hockey's weird. Like about that. hockey. Yeah, it's it's fun. We'll. We'll have some pretty fire content uh, come October when, when the season starts back up again. I honestly felt like you were playing a video game, but you were like 15 years into the future where you only <laughs> have like phony names and stuff. Yeah, there's the names are really tough because all these different countries these guys are from. And yeah, uh, so you just got to fake your way through the pronunciation. I've learned that's it's smart. 
so DK lines, uh, I ran 100. Pitchers, Verlander, 46%. Scherzer, 27. Sonny Gray, 23. Hmm. Waka, 22. Syndergaard, 21. Archer, 17. Kershaw, 12. Lance Lynn, not on here. What would you say Scherzer was? 27. Okay, and then Kershaw, 12? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think that's a good... Like, that's where I would be at. So um, you were looking at Verlander and Syndergaard lineups? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've made one kind of... Um, I can get to six of them okay. in my top hundred. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it. I mean, we talked about St. Louis. They've got some pretty cheap pieces. Um, you're you're going to have to punt a couple spots regardless, but I like the Scalso as a yeah, punt at second or third base. No, I can't. Um so, I mean, it can it can be done. I don't know if I'll do it because I'd like to pay up for some bats in, in Houston or maybe some Coors bats or some Arizona bats. Like, there are a lot of hitters that I like in good spots on this huge slate. So I might get down to Lance Lynn with one of my pitchers, but, man, it would be really nice to, to start my team with Verlander and Syndergaard and hopefully get 30 out of each of them and then hit on a stack. So, uh, in the six lineups that got run on DK with Syndergaard and Verlander as the two starters, four of them are stacks then of Mets and Rangers. Interesting. I wouldn't have expected Mets, I guess, but maybe I should have. The other two, uh, they have the Astros involved. So, it's an Astros stack with, drumroll, the Marlins. (laughs) Hmm. Who, who won the Marlins? Real Muto and... Real Muto, Bauer, uh, Miguel oh. Rojas, and Dietrich are the four guys. And then in one lineup, there's Starlin Castro, and then the other, uh, J.B. Shuck. Okay. So, That's fair. You know, I said they were cheap. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> uh, like, they're... I don't know. I mean, there's enough... There's enough um, value that we talked about, like Profar and uh, Descalso, Avila, like Harrison Bader, if he's in the lineup, I love him for 2,900. Uh, like it, it definitely can be done. You can go with these two studs because the pricing is still pretty soft on DK. Yeah, I think you can get there pretty easily, like if you wanted to. I mean, they, yeah. this came up in my top 100, so they, I would have them in if I were playing, you know, 150 lines of this stuff. Yeah. Definitely. On FanDuel, uh, 48% Verlander, 17% Waka, and then it's just a smattering. So under 10% of Scherzer, Syndergaard, Archer, Bauer, Kershaw, Pomeran, Sonny Gray. I'm actually perfectly okay with most of that. Yeah. Verlander's my guy. He's the guy that I would want the most. So if I were playing like a one-off lineup, I would be going to Verlander. Um, I would hope to get like an Astro stack with that. So, you know, I can get Altuve, Bregman, and somebody. Um, and then it goes pretty nicely with the Brewers So or the Cardinals. So I'm really excited to play FanDuel tonight. I think I'm going to have a lot of lineups okay. I like. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I like the Cardinals as one of my favorite stacks of the night. So you can kind of make it work with um, Cardinals and, and pick your two studs that you like. Yeah, I, I get a lot of Cardinals here. Um, Jose Martinez definitely double dong in tonight. So. Oh, boy. Yeah. He, uh, so Cardinals and Brewers are my top two stacks on FanDuel uh, coming up on here now. Where's Jose Martinez? How many lineups do I get with Jose Martinez? Why can't I remember what position he plays? Just click the lock button there and you'll be good. (laughs) Is he not showing up? No, there he is. I thought he had outfield eligibility for some strange reason. (laughs) Um, So he's in nine of the hundred that I did for FanDuel. That's it? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I I like him a lot, but you shouldn't lock a hitter tonight if you're making multiple lineups no not at all so and just i mean just i like him here. i like him too he's not the guy that you lock either <laughs> no you i mean if mike trout's 4200 against the lefty like he it happened a couple times last year that's a guy you can actually consider locking but uh martinez is in quite 
quite up to that level. So there's quite a few do- really nice uh, like Cardinals plus Brewers, Cardinals plus Diamondbacks, Cardinals plus Indian stacks that show up here. Yeah. All right, we've rambled long enough. I assume this has been ridiculously long. I'm anxious to see how long it was. Um, check out all our content today, whether that's basketball, hockey, or all of our baseball stuff. It'll be out throughout the day. Uh, live stream tonight starting around 6 o'clock. Um, do you have anything else that you need to add? No, just check out the uh, the hockey articles. Uh, they've been running pretty hot lately. Playoffs have been fun to watch. Uh, and then we'll have a huge baseball slate. And then you guys, you guys will talk about some NBA and mostly MLB on that live show, right? Yeah, not a lot of uh, hockey in the live stream unless you want to come on. No, no, you guys go. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I'll chat. Well, maybe I'll pop in chat and give some hockey takes if people want them. Sounds good. All, All right, right, guys, uh, go to awesomeo.com. Follow us on Twitter at Josh Engelman, at Jake Hari, at awesomeo underscore com. Uh, like and subscribe on on YouTube. You guys know the drill by this point, and you're probably sick of hearing us. So, have a good day. Uh, be safe on this illustrious 420, and we will talk to you again later. Good luck, guys.